They warned us that this was coming. Now it is here. Artificial intelligence has unleashed terror in the killing fields of Gaza. Germany stands accused of complicity in Israel's genocide. That has hit a nerve in Berlin. Plus, investigative journalists in Ukraine digging into state corruption, the dangers that come with that. For six months now, the world has watched as Israeli bombs have fallen on Gaza in a war that has killed more than 33,000 Palestinians. Another 10,000 remain unaccounted for, presumably dead beneath the rubble. The level of destruction is utterly inhumane, which, given the role that artificial intelligence has played in this war, is no accident. According to an investigation by two Israeli news outlets, the military there has been using an AI program called Lavender to identify its targets. The revelations about how the AI system makes those calls, the loss of innocent lives baked into the decision-making process, and how the killing actually takes place are all terrifying. Scarier still is the fact that this is technology that can travel. So the implications of this story extend well beyond the Gaza Strip. This is a war that six months in still manages through our phones and our feeds to horrify us daily. In the number of innocents killed, in the way they are killed. Palestinians urged by the Israelis to go to safe spaces that are then bombed. Civilians shot to death in hospitals or when lining up for food, starved to death while the world watches. And when the Israeli military uses artificial intelligence, an AI-based targeting system codenamed Lavender, as a weapon of war, among the casualties, the collateral damage is our collective humanity. Lavender appears to be a glorified AI washed kill list. Effectively, it's a system that throws up names, and we see through the reporting on the Lavender system that soldiers again are being compelled to treat Palestinians as numbers. What that does is it removes the friction that exists normally between humans and the decision to kill. All these systems lend a kind of veneer of technical rationality to what essentially seems to be a mass killing campaign. It shows how the military strategy after October 7th was dictated lar largely by vengeance. And it just goes to show that the use of this technology was really just kind of a crutch to allow this killing campaign to go on. The Israeli military first deployed AI to select targets in 2021 in a war on Gaza that lasted 11 days. Two months after Hamas's attacks on October 7th, two Israeli news outlets, Plus 972 and Local Call, reported that the army had rolled out a more advanced, more destructive AI tool called the Gospel, able to increase the number of targets, buildings and structures from dozens a day to thousands. Then, just last week, those same two outlets combined to lift the lid on Lavender revealing that it takes that AI technology and uses it to target humans based on things like their social media, their contacts, movements, and how many times they change their SIM cards. Plus 972 and local calls say that they base their reporting on six sources, all from the Israeli military. What their story makes clear is that the taking of innocent Palestinian lives is not a flaw in the technology, it is a feature built in. This is a good example where AI has been misused uh, to, to worsening the situation for people on the ground. How it was used for mass killing Palestinians, how they accepted 90% of accuracy and the 10% were accepted as a margin error for targeting people to end up with over 33,000 people uh, have been killed in Gaza. And the only human review for the lavender system was just to check within seconds if the target is a male 
male or not, which basically dehumanizes Palestinian men as they are all allowed to be targeted. And this is exactly why we should be questioning such technologies and how they are used and weaponized against oppressed people. Lavender basically creates a bank of targets, people to be eliminated, and the system found 37,000 such targets. This resulted in Israel bombarding Gaza with a quantity of weapons that is almost unheard of in terms of the amount of TNT that was dropped there. Why? Because we have enough targets to drop a very large amount of explosives, because the system had decided that these people need to be killed. The algorithms actually make these kill decisions, and they are loaded with probability and bias errors. Different from the errors in human decision-making, but errors all the same. The most concerning part of these revelations was the over-reliance on AI systems. There was essentially a complete trust in who the, the system determined was a target. So instead of usually culling through surveillance data, deciding if somebody was actually Hamas operative, the army just signed off on thousands and thousands of targets to strike. It essentially confirms that almost everybody in Gaza seems to be considered a legitimate um, target by the Israeli military. There's also the way they target them and when. Plus 972 and local call also revealed, reportedly based on those same six sources in the Israeli army, the existence of another automated system called Where's Daddy? It is used to track targeted individuals to their homes. Then comes the inhuman element. Israeli military personnel delay their bombing until after dark, when there's a greater probability of the target being there along with their family, thereby driving up the civilian death toll. Suddenly, airstrikes started targeting their houses. While Israel is backed politically in this war by Washington, its army needs Silicon Valley technologically. The military's mass surveillance systems are reliant on Google Images to work. Google has a policy that dictates its products cannot be used to cause what the company calls immediate harm. Not only is the tech giant breaking its own rules by letting the Israeli military attack Palestinians with Google's help, when journalists at the New York Times, The Intercept, or The Listening Post ask the company to justify its inaction or even comment on it, it fails to respond. What Google ought to do and what other companies ought to do is to ensure that there are safeguards against uh, their usage, that they aren't giving access to use their systems in ways that could help scale up the kinds of unlawful acts that we're witnessing in Gaza. Simply saying that one is pro-human rights as a tech company is not really enough anymore and really big tech companies have to have to do a lot more uh, to ensure that they aren't uh, knowingly or unknowingly contributing uh, to the situation in Gaza. The people at Google didn't necessarily realize they were creating software that would become the basis for one of the biggest surveillance systems humanity has ever seen. Some people in the army who saw these systems in action did something quite unusual and spoke about why it was so wrong. I've heard there are many people in the Israeli army who do not agree with how the war is being fought. Those who spoke up are perhaps the bravest Israelis in the war. Something broke within them and they decided that they would not cooperate any longer. <laughs> Israel has been honing its surveillance of Palestinians for years. The West Bank city of Hebron has been the primary laboratory, the testing ground for new surveillance tools. Palestinians in Gaza now find themselves in a dystopian nightmare, at the mercy of a military that can see their every move and can kill with apparent impunity. As damaging as the investigation by Plus 972, and local call may prove to be for Israeli leaders, the reality is this AI technology is being showcased. Lavender, the gospel, underpinned by Google Images, are all being marketed to potentially bad actors around the world. They could be coming soon to a war zone near you. An important aspect to keep in mind because oftentimes you know, tech companies that are particularly involved in supplying the kinds of systems, 
that Israeli security forces and the Ministry of Defense use actually gain a net benefit out of being associated with the kinds of scalable warfare uh, that we see happening in, in Gaza because it drives their value up from a point of view of military effectiveness. So now the next government that is seeking to exact the same kinds of warfare will look to these companies as well, right? The misuse of technology, the AI system, and everything that has been weaponized in this ongoing genocide bring us to a big question about how we should today join forces with other countries and with other progressive people to ask for global regulation for uh, the use of technologies and AI. This should bring us to the question of the decolonization of technology because regulations are lagging behind that led to this technology to be misused in war times. And as those AI systems are evolving, they are just used to increase the oppression of the already oppressed people in global majority countries. This past week at the International Court of Justice, Nicaragua accused Germany of facilitating genocide in Gaza. And that has not gone down well with either the German government or the news media there. Minakshi Ravi is here with the details. The ICJ is already adjudicating two lawsuits against Israel over its assault on Gaza. But the case brought by Nicaragua is the first to put one of Israel's allies in the dock. It centers on Germany's role as a primary supplier of weaponry to Israel. Germany is failing to honor its own obligation to prevent genocide or to ensure respect of international humanitarian law. Only the United States sends more military equipment to Israel than Germany. But as Washington does not recognize the ICJ's jurisdiction, a case against the U.S. is considered unviable. Nicaragua has argued that Germany's decision to keep its weapon supplies flowing after an earlier ICJ ruling that Israel is plausibly committing genocide makes it complicit. That would be a grave accusation for any state, but nowhere does it cut quite as deep as in Germany, given its responsibility for the deadliest genocide of all, the World War II Holocaust, but also the genocides early in the 20th century of the Herero and Nama peoples in what is now Namibia. German sensitivity was on display in how many in the media there decided to respond to the ICJ case. I find it strange, honestly, that the court diesen Fall überhaupt annimmt, äh, die Anklage Deutschlands. Denn im Grunde ist ja dann äh, der Vorwurf, dass Deutschland Beihilfe zum Völkermord leistet. Und das ist unglaublich. Other media outlets dismiss the allegations on account of Nicaragua's own poor human rights record. Ich glaube, wenn es eine Showveranstaltung ist, so wie Nicaragua offenkundig eine abziehen möchte, muss man das nicht ernst nehmen. The timing of the ICJ case was interesting. The day before the hearings began was the 30th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide, in which more than 800,000 people from the Tutsi ethnic group were killed. In a tweet, the German foreign ministry said the fate of the Tutsis is a constant reminder for us to never again look away. One day later, Germany was being accused at the world's highest court of doing far worse than that. Thanks, Mila.